Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to the natural habitat of my V12, which is the petrol station. I completely forgot that last time I drove this car, it was uh, out of fuel entirely, but luckily I'm only about a mile or so from a petrol station. So I've topped it up and we're good to go. So yes, we are off to RBM Hampshire today, my BMW specialist, because there's been a few things going wrong with this 7 Series for the past couple of months or so. Nothing, well I say nothing major, I mean really that's what we're gonna find out. The worst things that I've had are engine overheating, but that's probably because I've just been driving like a bit of a pillock, um, but also some weird transmission issues where it struggled to go from first into second. Um, it's sort of stopped revving out at about four and a half thousand RPM, and then the revs have just sunk. All sorts of weird things have been going on. So I think it's uh, about time for it to have a bit of an inspection. There's a slight misfire, you can hear the engine sort of feels a little bit lumpy at times. I've also got the parking light issue where the lights will not go off, meaning the battery will die sort of if the car's left for a couple of days. Uh, amongst a few other things, the air conditioning needs sorting out, uh, the filters, the pollen intakes are completely uh, perished, the seals are perished, so they need to be replacing. The AC needs a service anyway. There's a, <laughs> there's a number of things to do, um, but hopefully taking it to RBM today they'll be able to diagnose any issues that I've got and give me a quote for repairs. So that's really the plan today. And uh, I guess uh, it's not gonna get repaired today, but in a few days time, I'll bring it back to have the work done. But anyway, the car seems to be driving okay right now. So let's just try and pop it into second gear. I'm gonna just pop a window a little bit. I actually forget how fast this car is every time I drive it. It's um, it's quite remarkable actually, it's quite scary. It's 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 so much faster than it, it should be by looking at it. And of course, the sound. Well, I've made it to RBM Hampshire then. In their new location actually, it's a swanky little place. Maybe I'll show you around in a moment or so. So the V12 made it down here okay. And I say that because it hasn't really been driven since you saw me do that track day it was a few weeks ago at the time of filming this. I'm not sure when you saw the video, but what I didn't really say in that video is that when I was driving home after the track day, I noticed a few strange things. I noticed mainly a really, really, really heavy vibration around 50, 60 miles per hour on the motorway. I kept thinking it was the type of concrete on, on the particular part of road I was on, but it wasn't. And then also under quite sort of heavy load and heavy acceleration, there was again quite a big judder. So I've been thinking that perhaps it's the prop shaft that needs looking at or drive shaft or, or so, well, that's why I'm here, because they can tell me. However, since then, I did look at the tires thinking, well, that could be a reason for some of the vibrations. And you may notice that it's now on Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. I've literally just had these put on. I had Halfords do it, because they were the only place that could do it quickly. And I think, what did it cost me? 680 pounds for all four corners. A lot of money for tires, but I think could be a little bit worse because they're two 75s at the back. So anyway, looking at the tires um, after that track day, there were literal chunks missing out of the rear. So I thought that could actually be a cause for lots of the vibration. And I have to say, driving it down here today and a couple of little runs I've done, I haven't noticed the same vibration. So I'm hoping the tires were the issue in terms of that. But like I say, it really does need to go up on the ramp and have a proper look because I could have snapped any number of things <laughs> doing those drifts around that Kerbera Spring course. Uh, what I'm going to do now though is get Ross on camera here from RBM, see where he is in a second, um, and just show him around some of the bits that I think might need doing. There's uh, a number of other things. Get well soon. So yeah, I won't waste any more time. Let's get Ross on camera and uh, see what he has to say. Hi Ross, how you doing? Hi Joe, Thanks how's so it going? Thanks so much for being on the channel again. No worries I know it's at your favourite thing to do, isn't it? To uh... Pleasure, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on the, on the new place, by the way. Yeah, I might yeah. have a little peek in a minute if that's all right. Yeah, of course you can, yeah. Uh, I want to show you this first. This, I was just saying to the viewers, I took it on track uh, a few weeks back and was sort of sliding it quite a lot, which is, I guess, not what you're really meant to do with these. And on the way back from that, noticed quite a lot of, of vibrations. So I thought it could be something like drivetrain related potentially, or maybe I've snapped some roll bar or I, I don't know. I switched the tires out because 
they were literally missing chunks and the vibrations seem to have subsided a lot although i haven't noticed them again to be honest so hoping that might actually be what that was yeah but i'm still not too confident so i think because you did the alignment fairly recently we did, and i think yeah. that's off again so okay. that could be something suspension maybe sounds like you've been having some fun with that yeah <laughs> <laughs> too much fun i yeah. guess um so so we'll, we'll get it up and do a health check on it yeah air conditioning yeah under the bonnet let me just show you quickly uh, oh there you go the obd readers hanging out so that I noticed that, I mean, I tried to replace these myself a little while back, was the, are these the pollen intakes? I'm not sure what they're, what are they called? Yes, that's the housing for the, for the microfilters. Okay. Yeah, which is the, the cabin filter. Because the air conditioning hasn't really been blowing cold and I wonder if that had something to do with it because I took these out and the plastic uh, seals are like completely perished and the like metal clips are, well, they're in the glove box. So yeah. It's, it's still blowing air, but it's not cold, so I don't know if that has any. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to be related to your issue, but... OK. Um, that's there more for airflow. Um, might it be like a compressor or a Yeah, you, you, might, you might have um, a leak somewhere in the system, so we'll have to put it on the, okay. on, on the aircon machine and see what pressure's inside the system. Is there such a thing as an aircon machine? There is indeed, oh, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, it actually is due a service, because I noticed this sticker in here uh says july 21 so i was going to just place yeah but can you if you could replace all of this stuff that's broken it's broken yeah and then yeah potentially whatever else is needed to get the air blowing cold again yeah it's miserable fine. driving down here today honestly yeah, especially in the summer <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's horrible um what else was there i think it's probably a good idea to do an oil service yeah uh, especially after your track day exactly yeah <laughs> and maybe depending on the condition, because I mentioned to you actually, you're just off camera a minute ago about the gearbox is playing a few games. Yeah. So maybe like a transmission flush or service or something. Yeah, we can as do that, well. yeah. And diff oil change, I don't know really. Yeah, I mean BMW say they're lifetime fluid, but we found that when we do change the fluids on them, they are quite contaminated and black. Yeah. So they, they definitely do benefit from an oil change. I think with something like this and the way I've been treating it, it's probably not the worst of ideas yeah. uh, to do. But yeah, other than that, because I've just done the tyres, you guys did the brakes fairly recently, I think. Uh, I lose track. Yeah, we, I think we did them before your Scotland trip. That's right, yeah, you yeah. did, yeah. So other than that, to be honest, it's been absolutely brilliant. It's only when I took it on track recently <laughs> and since, it's <laughs> just been, I've just noticed a few things. Uh, I've still got that parking sensor issue, but I actually replaced the sensor and it didn't fix it, so it's probably something else. Sounds um, like it might have a sort of a broken wire behind the yeah, bumper, maybe. Yeah, I'm not that fussed about it anyway. So yeah, anyway, sorry, I'll stop wasting your time. Um, yeah, I guess time will tell when it goes up on the ramp. You might be able to see yeah. what else is going on. But yeah, if you wouldn't mind, because I know today you can't fix it because I need the car, but if you wouldn't mind sort of doing a quote for me today, yeah. And then we can come back in a few days and, and get it all sorted. Get it, get it all rectified. Yeah, no worries at all. Great, thank you very much. No worries. So this machine has just taken out 150 grams from the air conditioning. However, this sticker here says that what it should be taking out is 1120 grams plus or minus 25. So somewhere between 1100 and 1150. So in other words, this has definitely uh, not got enough pressure in it. So hopefully a regas will fix my uh, air conditioning woes. So while we wait, maybe I'll show you around a little bit of this new place. So obviously my car on this ramp here, there's two more full size ramps over there. And then what I do want to show you actually is in the car park. This absolutely stunt, well actually to be honest, that E92 M3 is really cool. Unbelievable spec. I love these wheels in silver. Most of them are black and you don't see that too often, but white with the red interior. 
uh, unbeatable actually. I, I, I like this. He's also got quite a tasteful carbon lip on the back. If you're watching and this is your car, fair play. Very, very cool. But as you may have guessed, it's what's next to it that I'm really, really interested by. I think it's just an 840, but it's a classic 8 series nonetheless. I remember about 10 years ago, you could, well, people were giving these away and they, they couldn't give them away. No one really wanted them, but now they have become extremely desirable and you can see why in this modern age with everything's technological and everything's just getting so big. This, oh, it's a proper car, isn't it? My favorite thing about it actually has to be these wheels. I've never seen this design anywhere else. And uh, well, I think they'd look quite cool on the Z4 actually. Also a very, very nice E46 M3 here as well. And although not part of RBM, I just have to show you this L322 here, a 2012 version, about as nice as they get actually. Unbelievably though, these are fetching still around 20K, 10 times what I paid for my one. So unlike the old place, there is also a reception area here at RBM, um, which is very nice. And in fact, I'm gonna sit in here for a bit while I wait for the air conditioning to be done and for the quote. Funnily enough, they got these BMW car magazines here. There's actually a feature in here about the E85 Z4, which I think, if I can find it, I'm actually gonna give it a read. warm so the car's just had a regas however it's still blowing warm air unfortunately so just trying to work out now what the cause of that is it will be a leak somewhere in the system no idea where but I think that's what they're looking for this is another issue that I'm having with the car. A warning comes up uh, on the dash sometimes saying parking lights on when I exit the vehicle. However, if you take a look, if I just go around here, you can see that the switch is in the off position, so they shouldn't actually be on. Um, so that's weird, and that's what's causing the battery uh, to drain. Okay, so you join me a few days later, back in the sunshine at RBM Hampshire. Now the car came in, I can't remember what it was, like Thursday, maybe last week, about a week ago now actually, before I had to take it to Silverstone for the Grand Prix, which is the weekend just gone. Now, luckily the regas of the air conditioning worked. So that was, well, that was brilliant because the Grand Prix weekend was so hot. There was five of us in the car and well, the air conditioning was a must. So luckily the air conditioning issue is fixed. Now, the reason I'm back today and didn't get everything done the other day is because a few parts need to be ordered in, namely the pollen filter housings. Uh, they finally just arrived because one of them had to come from Germany and also the gearbox kit and various other bits. So what we're gonna be doing today then is an oil change, which is just much needed really. It's probably been five, 6,000 miles since it's had it. Obviously I've driven the car quite hard as you've seen and also the transmission kit. So I think that's gonna be a filter within the housing itself and also the transmission oil. Now, as I mentioned, uh, and I found again, when driving to Silverstone and pushing the car a little bit, the gearbox isn't doing the best. It seems to, well, when you floor it into first and then to second, sometimes it just doesn't change. Uh, also, sometimes the transmission overheats and you get a warning if you keep flooring it and it will just sort of bounce off the revs, which isn't very good. And it's actually really uh, well, the opposite of reassuring when you're driving it. So the hope is by doing this transmission service, that will sort of fix the issue because the oil in the blocked filter could be the culprit for that. If that doesn't fix it, then, well, we might be looking at something more severe, maybe a clutch even, 
um, and we'll have to come back to that. But today at least, it's gonna get sort of a, a refresh, a lease of new life. There's also a bush that we'll need replacing, but that hasn't arrived yet, so we'll come back to do that too. So hopefully it'll just be that that we need to come back for and not anything more major, but the car is up on the ramp here at RBM. I've actually got a load of work to do, but I'll film the bits and bobs going on. First will be the oil drain and oil change, which will be much needed. And then we'll get onto the transmission and the pollen filters later on. But hopefully after today, it's gonna to be running as good as new again, because since I've started abusing it, it's not been the best. So what's this we're draining now, Ross? Is the, the... So this is the um, automatic uh, transmission fluid. Okay. And we've done the, so the, the oil, did you, did you look at that? Because that came out very dark, didn't it? Yes, yeah, so that's quite, quite black. It's, it's always looked quite black, but you know, when you drain the engine oil, but that was quite, quite black. So that means so, that was probably quite contaminated then? Yeah, so I'd okay. say it's a good job that we've done that. So. Okay, good. Um, so this is the gearbox oil that's about to come out of the transmission. What should this look like? So this should be like a golden-y colour, so this would be a good test of how it's lasted. Yeah. Oh. So as you can see, that's quite, that's quite black and contaminated. That is. So I get, that's kind of good because the car's here. Yeah. So do you think, I mean, this may fix. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of it. I'm hoping this may be the culprit for the sort of transmission woes that I'm having. Yeah, I'd say. And not, yeah. not a clutch. I mean, they recommend every 60,000 to do this service, so. This car's on 122,000 miles, and it's, yeah, so I, I don't know if it's had any. Judging by that oil, I'd say it's probably yeah, it's a good time to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that says 2016 or 2018. So 29th of July, 2018, yeah. Okay. But it has taken quite a lot of abuse since then. Yeah. So here you can see the old pan, and these are magnets apparently. So Ross was just saying they pick up. Um, any sort of residue that gets into the transmission oil. Obviously what happens over time is th these get so clogged that they stop uh, being magnets and so it then gets con cam contaminated uh, and then obviously next to it we've got the brand new one. Interestingly um, this is dated 2018 but the connector here um, on the old one is from 2012 so it looks like this wasn't replaced uh, at the same time as this was done, so it would be good to get that replaced now as well. Also, I forgot to do this last time, but now the air conditioning has been serviced. Let's get rid of the old sticker, that'll be another thing that needs a good old scrub now. Get rid of that glue. Aha! Goodbye. So here's the new pollen, uh, what is it? Pollen housing, intake housing thing. It basically connects the pollen filter housing here and the pollen filter into the, into the car. But as you can see, it's the same on both sides. Or well, you might not be able to see in there, the sort of rubber seals are completely perished. In fact, let me just show you this one that's been taken off of this side. You can see here, all around, it's just snapped off and uh, it should look more like this, uh, which is what connects into the sort of heater matrix there, down there. So I noticed that these were obviously snapped 
Um, I thought actually the reason I took these out in the first place was because the air conditioner wasn't working. Of course, that needed a regas, but this should help the whole system anyway. Pollen filter themselves are not being replaced because they're, they're pretty much okay actually. But yeah, so this is going back on with the new thing here. All done? Yeah. Amazing. They looked a bit fiddly to put in. To show you've spent some money on it. So it's what it's OEM. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I want to do actually is I'm going to get you my very beige service booklet out of the car here. And we'll get a couple of stamps in it. There you go, look at that. Right, so car's all done. It's had the transmission service, it's had the oil change, had those new pollen things, I still can't remember what they're called, on it. And uh, well, Ross is going to send me the invoice later actually, so I'll let you know what that's cost me. The main thing is to jump in it now and see how that transmission is acting, if it's behaving itself. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed, as I said earlier. Let's hope that this new lease of life and this refresh that it's just had at RBM is gonna make it perfect. So, as you can see, I'm back in the 7 Series after taking it to RBM. That day it was gloriously sunny and welcome to normal summer weather in the UK. It's not exactly gloriously sunny, it's raining a fair bit. But anyway, that's boring because we're here for the 7 Series. I've actually only driven the car once before today, which was driving it back from RBM. Let me tell you firstly how much uh, money I've spent. I spent £700 on what you saw in the video. That was about £100 uh, and I'm going to be quite vague with the numbers, uh, round them up or down. £100 or so for the pollen uh, intake bits, uh, £100 for the engine service, I think maybe, sorry, the engine oil change, uh, £60-odd pounds for the uh, air conditioning, and then about £300 for the transmission service with the new um, uh, fluid and uh, housing and, and filter and all of the rest of it. So uh, with VAT, it came to just under 700 pounds. And I have to say, uh, as you can see from that acceleration I've just done, the car is performing a lot better. It does feel much smoother overall. But on the way home from RBM, I was unfortunately able to recreate the transmission issue again. And now that we've gone into a 70 mile an hour zone, I'm going to try and see, well, I've just come out in the car today basically to see if it carries on doing it or if it is, in fact, better. So what I'm going to do is put it into second and then I'm going to floor it because normally what you'd find is the car will hesitate around 4,500 RPM and sort of bounce back down the rev. So I'm just going to wait for some space here, clear behind me now, and I'm just going to floor it and see what happens. And actually, surprisingly, it's not done it. That is uh, smoothly gone through the gears there. Let's just try a third gear pull. And all the way up to 80 there, that was very smooth. Interesting. So, oh. What I thought I was going to be filming today is showing that unfortunately the issue's still there um, because it, it, it was still doing it on the way home from RBM but maybe as the oil's running in through the system a little bit more potentially or because the car's not been used, all the components are just nice and cold and not worn. I don't know, maybe the car's okay, which is, I mean, as well as the V12 noise, it's metaphorically music to my ears actually that it's seems to be going through the gears nicely. Uh, let's just go back into second and see if it deals with this okay now. Okay. Okay. So, what I'm going to do then is actually stop driving the car like that and cool it down and just cruise it how, how I normally drive it. But I'm actually quite happy because I think potentially, well, the issue has definitely improved because every time I floored it, um, it the, the revs would, I was hoping to demonstrate it, but essentially just stop at four and a half thousand RPM, 
and then bounce back down and transmission overheated warning would come on. Which is probably the clue, potentially the transmission was just getting really overheated and it was a fail safe sort of thing. So potentially with that transmission uh, change um, and now that the car's actually had a few heat cycles through it with the new fluid, maybe actually it's done the job. So I was thinking the other day when I drove home from RBM that it hadn't made a difference. My issue is more mechanical, but seemingly it's okay for now. Let's just do one more in third gear. Just a little pull up to 80 again quickly. And I have to say, it's changing better than it ever has. So, fingers crossed then, the problem is solved. I, I really hope it is. I wanna say uh, a big thanks to uh, RBM Hampshire and Ross in particular for looking after this car and all of my cars actually. They always do a brilliant job, uh, super flexible and obviously they really helped me out by letting me stick a camera in their faces. So, uh, big thanks to them, obviously, I can't recommend them enough. So if you are looking for a BMW specialist, do do give them a call or send them a message on Instagram, whatever works easiest for you, they'll be uh, able to speak to you. So yeah, big thanks to those guys. Fingers crossed then the car is all good. A big thank you to all of you for watching and following the series on this V12 7 series. Being totally honest, I'm a little bit, I'm struggling with this car at the moment. Uh, for a number of reasons, I'm not really using it because I've been super fortunate to have quite a few press cars lately. I'm actually uh, currently have a Stelvio Quadrifoglio for a couple of weeks, which you'll be seeing soon in a video. Um, but also, yeah, I've just, I've not really got a use for it right now. I want to take this car to Germany, take the limiter off, go to the Autobahn, do some top speed runs, do some Nürburgring laps in this, I'd love to do all of this, but with COVID, it's quite difficult, as you can imagine. Well, actually impossible at the moment. So what I'm saying is if you've got any ideas or just anything you'd like to see with this car that maybe I'm not thinking of or I just haven't yeah, thought to do yet, do comment below. I want to hear from you guys. I feel like it's been a while since we've had a little bit of a, a chat. So do let me know in the comments below what you want to see. I know lots of you are keen for the Range Rover stuff. Now that's coming very soon. Uh, some of the guys at Richmond Land Rover have been on holiday, so we're just trying to get some dates in to get some more repairs done. Some have already been done, just want to do a few more and put them all into one video for you. So yeah, that's enough waffle from me. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I'm in a good mood now because I wasn't expecting the car to behave itself right now, and it seems to be. So I'm gonna spend the rest of my afternoon by the looks of things sitting in traffic on the M25, and until the next video, I will see you very, very soon.